Welcome to our sixth Orchard Talk in the series about best practices for care of our heritage apricot orchard. Now, the orchard is located next to the Los Altos History Museum. And at the museum, we strive to inspire our community to care for our historical landmarks. The topic of this Orchard Talk is pests and pathogens. And spoiler alert, we're gonna be talking about the importance of protecting our trees from the brown fungus, brown rot fungus. It just breaks my heart when I see trees dying in our orchard. This baby was planted just two years ago. It started out so good. It put set on the blossoms. It vigorously produced leaves. It, um, the fruit set on and then the fruit mummified. I don't know if you can see, but this little dot in the middle there, that's a mummified fruit. The leaves turned brown and it died. And it isn't only the babies that have this problem. This middle-aged tree also died, also with signs of brown rot. And there were at least 10 trees that have died in our orchard since the beginning of the year. We gotta do something about this. Let's play detective and take a closer look. So, Let's, uh, let's see what you can uh, detect in this picture. Um, what do you see that would be indicators of pathogens in our orchard? Well, the easy one is this little critter, the Western tussock moth. It eats the leaves. And some of you may remember last year when there were just like zillions of them in the oak trees by the museum. We also have some kind of insect damage on this fruit. I'm not sure who's the culprit there, but the real culprit is brown rot. Do you see this mummified fruit? That is sending out spores of fungus that's going to infect other parts of the plant. Uh, so these uh, withered blossoms are an indicator of brown rot. And if you look really closely, there's a, a drop of sap there. That's an indicator of the canker disease. Um, these drooping leaves, those are the ones, the little clumps of leaves that you've seen turn brown in the orchard. Those are very indicative of the trees that have died with other uh, signs of the brown rot. So to control the damage from pathogens, the goal of our city orchard is twofold. First, reducing the damage of four causes, four pathogens. The canker is a bacterial disease. The brown rot is a fungus. We've got the insect damage and then there are concerns about rodent damage. The second part of the goal is the integrated pest management. So that's maintaining the health of our trees so that they're less vulnerable to pathogens. It's also doing things like providing habitat for the beneficial insects. So here you see in this inset a wasp that is laying its eggs on the cocoon of the tussock moth. And its larvae, the wasp larvae, are gonna kill off the caterpillar that's inside that cocoon. The most important time of the year for controlling the pathogens, particularly the brown rot, is at the red bud stage. So in the commercial orchards, this is the time when they will spray with um, to be able to control fungus and disease. So that would be March or April. But as I mentioned, or can I mention yet? Anyway, we haven't sprayed for um, at least five years in our heritage orchard. The insect outbreaks, they occur at, at different times. And so controlling them in the commercial orchards is pretty much as needed. But again, we haven't done anything in our heritage orchard. And I want to emphasize that the fruit is not sprayed 
in our heritage orchard. But this is the result of not spraying. In the box of apricots that I got this year, the spoilage was 30%, and this is the effect of brown rot. We've got to do something about this. Now, not every tree is infected, so there were other boxes that, you know, my friends told me they had, they had no problems. They saw no spoilage in there. But we really got to do something about this. So um, the, the key to indicated integrated pest management is to keep the orchard healthy. And I had great hopes. We had such a really thick set of fruit this year. And what, um, what we currently do, what the orchard is currently does, is to thin out fruit set like this um, to control the brown rot. It's also possible to control the canker by judicious pruning. In one of the trees that died, you can see the results of, of not pruning. And this wind, wound on a branch, there's a lot of the sap that's seeping out. Those are the indicators of the, the canker. Another way of addressing reducing the canker is to use the Lovell rootstock. Um, it's resistant to the canker, and we're doing we've done that. So Phil has um, the, the new trees that he planted are the Blenheim apricot fruit on fruit bearing branches on the Lavelle rootstock. But we really need to find some ways that the public will accept the use of organic sprays in order to control the brown rot. You know, relatively uh, control of rodents is, is pretty low priority. But these things um, are definitely um, interconnected. When you see the base of a tree like this, the root system being undermined, you know, it's like, well, why? What happened there? And it probably was the result in the past of this cute little guy, this crown squirrel. The undermining of the roots plus the bacterial canker are what does the trees in. So when you see the bark separating from the tree like this, that's an indicator of the bacterial cancer. And what's happened, as you can see of this cross section from one of the trees that, um, that had to be removed this year, they, the canker attacks the phloem layer between the bark and the, the inner part of the tree. And this reduces the flow of nutrients between the branches and the roots. So double, triple whammy of brown rot, root damage, and bacterial canker is why our trees are dying. So our city orchardist is Phil Deach, and here he is inspecting the, um, the, the trees at the red bud stage to see what indicators um, he can find, indicators of pathogens. But he has to balance several considerations. The orchard has not been sprayed for brown rot for at least five years. And, you know, I'm, Phil is really concerned about the safety for people and for the environment. And this, you know, this is a really, this is a difficult pull and tug there. It's really important that um, care of the orchard be compliant with the, um, the city and the county integrated pest management uh, program. And this is because, um, oh, okay, so what, what's in the future? Um, we've really got to do something to address the, uh, the, the brown rock as indicated by this mummified fruit. One of the most important things is promoting the health of the trees um, because that will reduce the vulnerability. And as I said in a previous orchard talk, we really, really need a drip irrigation system to promote the health of our trees. But equally important is working with our public to find a way that would be acceptable to be able to spray, the, um, to use the organic sprays in the red bud stage to be able to protect our trees from the brown rot fungus. 
Now, brown rot was a problem back in the days of um, J. Gilbert Smith in the early 1900s. So he also saw these mummified fruits and, you know, like the, the sap um, droplets. He sprayed copper sulfate to reduce the brown rot. But you hear horror stories from folks who say that the kids at the local grammar school, which is where the community center is now located, saw a green haze over the orchard. And naturally, their parents were really concerned um, about the, the health of their kids, what effects this might have. And it's from, you know, those kinds of bad experiences in the past. We, copper sulfide is not sprayed anymore. Um, that our public is, you know, understandably really concerned when you use that word spray. But there are safe organic sprays that can be applied in, a, you know, in the manner that they're labeled, such that the safety of people and the environment is protected. So I really, really need to hear from you um, about you know, what your thoughts are about how we could work together to find a way to safely protect our orchard from, from the, the brown rot, how we could apply these organic sprays in a manner that would be acceptable to the public. So please email me, Jane, at hello at losaltoshistory.org. And I look forward to, um, to hearing from you. Thank you.